two and a half thousand years after the events that I described in the last chapter took place, three investigators of who wrote the Bible each independently made the same discovery. Who were these three investigators and what was their discoveries? Well, that's what we're getting ready to find out right now as we open up the Kindle book and get us some understanding. One was a minister, one was a physician, and one was a professor. The discovery that they all made ultimately came down to the combination of two pieces of evidence, doublets and the names of God. Three different earlier investigators, they noticed the pattern of double versions of the same story, which are called today doublets. And they also noticed the different names that each of these versions of the story give to the deity that they worship. And so after many thousands of years of doing this, just bowing down, going about their day, when they lifted up their head the last time and they looked around, they said, oh, hold on, something else is going on here and it's more than what meets the eye. They saw that there were apparently two versions, each of a large number of biblical stories, two accounts of the creation, two accounts of each of several stories about the patriarchs, Abraham and Jacob, and so on. Then they noticed that quite often, one of the two versions of the story would refer to God by one name and the other version would refer to God by a different name. And so what are these different versions of the name? We have one God or Elohim in Hebrew, and we also have the Lord God or Yahweh Elohim in Hebrew. And we're gonna be able to see this clearly as we go over these double versions of the creation story. In the case of the creation, for example, the first chapter of the Bible tells one version of how the world came to be created. And the second chapter of the Bible starts over with a different version of what happened. In many ways, they duplicate each other. And on several points, they contradict each other. And so let's go into the Bible right now and break down the creation story so we can see exactly what Dr. Richard Elliott Freeman is talking about. And so this is the warning right now. If you're someone who's sensitive about your biblical beliefs, then right now is the chance for you to stop watching the video, right? And then you can go ahead and return to your life and then believe whatever it is that you want to believe. But for those that want to get into the free world, then you're going to want to continue watching. You're going to want to continue watching so you can uncover the world that has been pulled over your eyes. And so let's go into Genesis chapter one and start on the first version of the creation story. Genesis one verse one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so who created the heavens and the earth? It says God or Elohim in Hebrew. So pay attention right now on how this creation account uses this name of God. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds, and it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. So let's stop here, because both of these creation counts talk about the creation of plants, trees, animals, man and woman, but they do it in a different order. And so in the first creation story, we have plants and trees created before animals, men and women. So let's keep this in mind and let's pay attention. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, and it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, 
Let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals each according to its kind. And it was so. So what the author imagined to be created next were the animals. And so up to this point in the first version of the creation story, we have God creating the plants and trees and then afterwards the animals. So let's go ahead and get some more. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So now we have the creation of mankind. And the author or the authors, they imagine that man and woman were created at the same time. And so in this account, the author didn't find it important to name the humans. Right. He kept his uh, description general. And this is different from what we're going to find in the second version. And so thus far we have in the first creation account, we have the creation sequence as the plants and trees. Then we have the animals and then we have humans, both man and woman at the same time. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So God has now finished the creation of heaven and earth, right? And he is done and he's completed his part of creation. And so after this, he took a rest, right? From all that back breaking work. And so this concludes the creation story and there shouldn't be anything else that we need to talk about when it comes to creation. But watch what happens when we go to the next verse. Here we go. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Wait, hold on. What do you mean that this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created? We just went over the account of creation. So why are we talking about it again? That's because this is a different account, right? Imagined by a different author. Whereas the star of the first creation story was God, the star of this creation story is the Lord God. And so let's see how God's creation of the heaven and earth differs from that of the Lord's God creation of the heavens and the earth. Pay attention. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth and there was no one to work the ground. Remember in the first creation story that we had the plants created first in Genesis 1 verse 11? Well, right out the gate, we see that the author is letting us know that plants did not come first. And it almost seems like this account here is a rebuttal to the first account, right? But I'm not saying that this is certainly what it is, but it does appear that this could be some type of rebuttal, right? Because the author here is making, is going out of his way to make a point deliberately that the plants did not come first. And so let's go ahead and keep going to find out what he thought came first. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Uh oh, the Lord God formed man first. Not man and woman together like we've seen in the first account, 
but rather he formed just the man. And so in this second creation, we have the man being created first, and then we'll find out what else comes next. So let's go ahead and get some more. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now we have the Lord God creating the trees to grow from the ground. And so we have man first, and now we have the tree second in line. And so let's go ahead and keep going. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there, it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havilah where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Ashur. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. Uh-oh, we now have the Lord God creating the wild animals, right? And then bringing them to Adam to see what he would name them. And so the sequence of creation thus far in the second account, it goes man, then the trees, and then the animals. And so let's see what else we have next. Here we go. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. And last but not least, we have the authors imagining that the Lord God created the woman. And they created the woman at the end of creation. And so in the second creation story, we have man, trees, animals, and then the woman. And so let's go ahead and finish these last few verses in this creation story. This man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. And we can see that the man and woman in the second creation story, they actually have names, which was different from the first account which only called them humankind or just male and female. And so back in the day when I was in the pit and bowing down to the gods, I would just assume that these accounts, that they just represented the same thing and that one account was just going more in depth or more detail into the other part of creation. But after I came into the free world, I realized that that was not the case because as we have just seen now that both of these creation stories they describe the creation process in contradictory ways, right? And both of these accounts, they can't possibly be right at the same time, right? It can't be that way. And so many biblical scholars, they've come to realize that this creation account, along with many other biblical stories, they're not just simply one account, but instead they're multiple separate accounts. The investigators saw that they were not simply dealing with a book that repeated itself a great deal, and they were not dealing with a loose collection of somewhat similar stories. They had discovered two separate works that someone had cut up and combined into one. You see that? So it's our time to raise our level of awareness, climb out of the pit, and get into the free world where life is much better and it makes much more sense. And so this is the end of part four commentary on the book Who Wrote the Bible by Dr. Richard Elliott Freeman. And so I wanna thank you for watching all the way into the end. My name is Brooklyn St. Michael and I'll catch you on the next one.